Uh, okay, thanks, Siron. I'm Joel, and this work is uh, in collaboration with uh, Peter Back. Can't hear? I'll talk here? Better. Okay. So, I'm Joel, and this work is in collaboration with uh, Peter Back from IBM Research, who gave a great talk uh, yesterday, and with uh, Tzvi Koplik from the University of Haifa. And, uh, like Yaron said, I lead a human-computer interaction and visualization lab at the University of Haifa. Uh, we do lots of cool stuff. We do lots of interaction, uh, gesturing, augmented reality, um, calibration or uh, interaction with large displays. And we also examine, we also look at visualization. So uh, on the bottom here, you see our efforts in visualizing um, the information and communication technology, ICT, index uh, of Israel. So we try uh, here to visualize a uh, time base. So uh, the ICT index is kind of an index that says um, for each uh, city uh, how advanced it is in ICT. And we try to see um, how it goes through time. It's multidimensional. There's many dimensions for uh, each um, index. And uh, this effort is led by Yael Albo, who um, hopefully will show this next year. Uh, today I want to talk about museums. Um, the roles of the muse museums have changed. Um, if in the past they were merely uh, exhibiting objects, they were keepers and exhibitors of important heritage objects, uh, then they changed to interpreters of these objects and um, finally to encouraging visitor uh, interpretation and, visitor learn uh, and learning of visitors. Um, so learning is an important part of the museum and this learning is free, uh, free choice learning, it tends to be personal. Uh, self-motivated and self-paced. So people walk in the museum at their own pace and they want to learn, but they want to um, uh, own their learning. They want to uh, learn uh, in an exploratory way and in a non-linear way. Um, so here, we're, here we can see uh, people in the museum and we see their behavior changes. Some people walk uh, fast, some people sit and maybe get the atmosphere of the museum. Some people uh, stop and, and look at an exhibit for a long time or for a long period of time. Uh, some people come in groups. And um, again, all, all this behavior uh, varies a lot and it depends upon the personal motives, uh, motivations, um, background, and all kinds of stuff. Um, here we see a fast forward movie of uh, visitors. And again, there's very different kinds of visitor behavior. A group behavior in the museum is very important. Many people come uh, to the museum's uh, small groups of family and friends. Um, some people follow a leader, so maybe a parent with small kids. Other uh, visitors are come together and want to experience the uh, museum experience together and want to see things together. Um, others just come together and then they separate and each person goes to their own points of interest. Um, so we wanted to think, uh, the main uh, point of this project was how can we visualize museum visitor behavior patterns? Can we try to visualize these patterns? Um, and this um, research was done at the Hecht Museum. Um, anybody here visited the Hecht Museum? Okay, so quite a, quite a few. Uh, the Hecht Museum is a very nice, uh, small to medium-sized museum uh, located very conveniently for us at the University of Haifa. Um, it's an archaeology, archaeological museum. It focuses on the archaeology of the land of Israel. Um, this is a ship dated 2,400 years back. It was uh, taken out of the water near Magan Michael. Um, it's a Phoenician ship. This is the main attraction of the museum. The uh, museum also has other kinds of uh, artifacts and things that it shows from the Phoenician area, from the Egyptian area, and um, from different kinds uh, eras of, um, of Israel. Um, the Pill Project is a long-term long project that is in collaboration with the University of Haifa, and uh, FBK Erst in Trento, uh, Italy, and it's, uh, lasts now for almost seven or eight years. Um, the main focus of the, pro of, of the project was to um, do context-aware multimedia uh, mobile guide. So we developed um, a, a mobile guide. It was context-aware, meaning it knows where you are every moment in time. Um, not every moment, but it knows in se uh, several moments. We're going to show you that later. Uh, it's personalized, it's, it's a smart uh, guide, it's, it tries to think uh, or to know uh, the behavior of the people, to understand what you like and what you don't like, and to give you presentations, uh, multimedia presentations, which are adapted to um, 
your um, preferences and your location. Um, it also supports small groups. Like I said, many people come with small groups. Uh, and in, in, in the process of this guide, we also had a position system. So we wanted to know uh, um, the positioning of the person to give them uh, personalized presentations that are uh, adapted to the place where you are. Um, the positioning system uh, has uh, kind of these beacons on, on uh, hide it uh, in the museum. And you wear the small blind, which is like a matchbox size blind. Uh, and this is based on RF technology. And when you enter the area of the beacon, we know that you are there. The uh, blind communicates with the beacon and then sends a message to our server. The server parses it and gives you a presentation or information about the location you are uh, you're at. And we, um, this is a map of the, of the museum. Here's where you enter. And we mapped, we put these beacons on many, many places, many important, all the important uh, exhibitions, exhibits in the museum, and including all the pathways as well. Uh, so we'll know if you're entering one room or leaving one room, and if you're standing in front of an important exhibit, exhibit we're going to give you information there. Um, so yeah, this is more or less the coverage that we have of the museum. We have around 20 to 30 percent coverage uh, of the entire museum, and we have uh, all the pathways uh, covered as well. So we want to see if we can use this data that we have in the positioning of the users uh, to learn about visitor behavior and, and not only learn but also convey uh, this, uh, uh, this information. So the, the process that we made is, first of all, we try to char characterize the problem and to try to understand the problem better. Uh, then look at the data and make some data abstractions uh, and, and clean the data and show it. And finally, only finally, to visualize the data uh, and, and, and to show um, the, uh, the, the information that we characterized at the beginning. So for characterization of the problem, we went to curators. Um, we interviewed uh, 15 curators uh, and museum personnel uh, from the Hech Museum, but also from different museums, from Tel Aviv uh, Museum of Art and from the um, Israeli Museum. We asked them, what are you interested to know? Uh, what do you want to know about your visitors? Um, what are the things, if you knew, you, if you can know about visitor behavior, what would you want to know? Now, not everything we can show them, but we, but we did open-ended questionnaires and open-ended interviews, uh, and um, we wanted to know what, what is the problem that we're trying to solve first. Um, so we came up uh, after these interviews with three main tasks. First of all, to find, uh, they wanted to know, the uh, curators wanted to know the visitor engagement with exhibits. How are visitors engaged? with their exhibit? Do they uh, stay there long? Which exhibits are the important ones or the ones that visitors like best? And stuff like that. Second, uh, they wanted to know about circulation in the museum. How do people pa uh, walk around? Because they, they put a lot of effort into um, uh, trying to make people go in certain ways, in certain directions, and stop here. But they didn't know if they're uh, effective in these, uh, in these ways. And finally, they wanted to understand individual and small group uh, patterns. They wanted to know, uh, okay, certain visitors, how do they walk? Where do they stop? Can I uh, see a, one group of people, a small group, or one person, and to see their uh, path through the museum? Um, so I'll, I'll go back to the uh, task analysis. But then we went to the data. After we knew more or less what we wanted to do, we went to the data. And we gathered 567 uh, real visitor uh, information with and without mobile guides. So some of them went with a mobile guide that gave them information uh, about the uh, exhibit. Some of them went without. Um, this, was, this took about a year. Um, data was saved on our database and later pre-processed and cleaned. This was a long process. I'm not going to talk about it too much, but it's, the, the data was pretty dirty. Um, these sensors are not that accurate. Uh, and there's many problems with, with the sensors. Everybody doing indoor positioning or uh, working with sensors know that uh, uh, sensors are not that accurate. So we cleaned the data, uh, and uh, this resulted in a list of time intervals for each visitor. So each visitor we know uh, from time zero to time uh, one minute he was here, and then from time one minute and 30 seconds to time whatever he was in, in, in a different location. This was not continuous. We didn't know what happened in between, but we had a pretty good feeling of where the visitors went. Um, so finally, we reached our um, goal of visual design, and we wanted to convey a lot of information. We wanted to convey the location, uh, various conditional information, so whether the person had a, local, uh, um, a mobile guide or not, whether this was a first-time visitor or not. 
Um, we wanted to convey a lot of race information, and I'll, I'll show that later. Uh, orientation and direction of movement and movement flow and uh, all this information. So uh, what we came up with is with a, a, a diagram or a glyph that we call a, a tangram diagram. So this is uh, the uh, motivation for the name came from the game, tangram ga game, which is called, I don't know if it's, if you agree with the name, but it's a sexy name. Um, anyway, we wanted to show, uh, it, it conveyed a lot of information. It can convey a lot of information. The size of the glyph can show uh, absolute size, uh, can, be, can, can be matched to one attribute, and the ratio of the inner uh, triangle and the outer triangle can be conveyed to another uh, attribute. Uh, there's two planes or, uh, which are represented by colors. The direction can convey something else, and I'll show you how we use this uh, right now. So first of all, I wanted to use this diagram to show the engagement with exhibits. And um, from the uh, interviews, we found out that engagement, engagement actually can be um, uh, translated into two, uh, two things. Holding power, which means for each exhibit, how long the person stays there. So how, how, much, how much holding power it has. If a person stays a long time at an exhibit, it has a, a large holding power. Attracting power, on the other hand, shows uh, how many percentage of the person, of the people visiting the museum, go to that exhibit. So you can think of, for example, uh, the Mona Lisa. It has uh, a, a, probably a high attracting power. because Everybody goes to the Louvre, has to see the uh, Mona Lisa. It possibly has a low holding power because maybe there's a, a large, a lot of people there and you just kind of glimpse at it and go away. Or, or maybe if you're very interested in it, it might have a, holding power, a high holding power for you. So we wanted to show holding power and attracting power. We also wanted to show how does the usage of the mobile guide affect engagement. Um, so we used the glyph that I showed before, and we mapped uh, holding power to the size of a triangle. We mapped attracting power, which is uh, basically a ratio, the percentage of the uh, people, um, to the inner uh, triangle from the outer triangle. Okay, so it's a percentage. And we mapped the color um, that for with guide or without guide, if people using the guide or people uh, uh, not using the guide. So you can see, for example, in this cliff, it can show maybe a high uh, holding power because it's large and a high attraction power because the circle, the, the triangle fills almost the entire triangle. You can see here, this, is, this has a lower attraction power, a lower holding power, sorry, but it has a higher, uh, a very high attraction power. And the usage of the guide here uh, is higher than the, without using the guide. And this one has a, a, a smaller attraction power. So we mapped this to the, uh, we mapped this glyph, we put the glyph on each point, every exhibit that we have on the map, and we came up with this uh, visualization. And uh, people enter the museum from here, okay? So you can see here, for example, if I uh, make it bigger, you can see at the beginning, this is the first place, it has obviously a high holding power, because everybody, uh, not, not obviously, it has obviously a high um, attraction power because everybody passes through it. Holding power, at the beginning you still have a lot of energy, you have a lot of time, so you, you, you spend more time at the beginning, right? And this is the ship, this is the main attraction of the museum. At the end of the ship, the first place where you stop it has a high attraction power, again, because it's filled up, and also has a pretty, much, pretty high holding power. And you see this, this exhibit is very interesting, you see that the mobile guide in blue uh, made people stay there for quite a while. Okay, they made them stay a lot. And ind indeed, there's a lot of information in the uh, guide there, very interesting information as well. Um, this is the second floor of the museum, and you can see that um, there's a very low attraction power there. People stay at the places there uh, for a fairly amount of time, but the attraction power is very low. And this was very saddening, I guess, for the uh, museum curator when, when they saw it. Uh, because they have a very, very uh, interesting and, and famous for them um, uh, collection of coins uh, that they gathered, and they said it's a great collection of coins, but apparently nobody, uh, not a lot of people see it. Um, so it's a point of concern, and, and the, the museum curator said to, that he has to think of ways to make people go to the second floor. Um, our uh, second uh, 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 task was to uh, take care of circulation, circulation and general movement patterns of visitors between rooms, um, especially paths and junctions where people uh, went away, and we wanted to, say, to use the same glyph. So um, we mapped it a bit differently here. Um, the direction here shows 
uh, amount of people going from one room, from room A to room B, and from room B to room A. Um, and uh, the color or the inside ratio, so the ratio between first time visitors and uh, uh, the entire population. So for example, if you look at this one, you can see that there's more people going from, from right to left than from left to right. And if you look at this uh, glyph <laughs> here, uh, only people are going from right to left and probably there's some, some sort of blockage there, uh, intentional blockage in the museum that allows people only to go from one uh, direction to another. So we mapped this again to the rooms, to the uh, pathways, and to see where people go. And this, this, uh, we show this to, to curators, I'll talk about this a bit later. And we saw that the main paths that people took were from one right to two, to seven to six to eight. That was one main path. We saw another main path from one to two, uh, to three to four to five to eight, and then the way back. And this made a lot of sense uh, to, curator, to, to the curators when they saw it. Finally, we wanted to understand individual and small group temporal patterns. Um, so we use the same glyph uh, to show temporal patterns. Um, I'll just show it on, on the visualization itself. Uh, the temporal pattern goes from up, from uh, above to below. Uh, colors deficits rooms, so a different color is a different room. Um, and this is one visitor in, in, in number one. You see that you go, and uh, every rectangle is a different exhibit. And the inside shows the amount of time he, uh, he or she uses the, the mobile guide. So we can see uh, th this is a group of two people, A and B. This is also a group of two people, two people A and B. And we can see that in this group, uh, group number two, they came in together, but then they separated and, al and almost all their visit was apart. They didn't go to any exhibits together. And on the other hand, in group number three, you can see that they more or less went to the same locations all the time. Um, and if I look closer uh, on, on this group, I can see that there's a certain, that the, the person here, the, uh, B, uh, entered, they went or entered uh, each exhibit a little before person A. You can see that they entered the room a little before here, a little before here, a little before here. Okay, and we also annotated uh, the exhibit names, but uh, that was a different visualization. Um, so this gave, again, the curators more an understanding, and look at the group of three people, of how the group uh, interacted and how they walked in the museum in the temporal aspect. So for the evaluation, or to evaluate it, we went back to the curators uh, and we showed them these visual visualizations. Some of them we worked together during the entire process, so they weren't um, they, they knew them already. Some of them saw them for the first time. Uh, they, they were very pleased. They were very happy to see their assumptions or to see their, their behavior. They said that they never before really uh, th thought about or they thought about, but they didn't know how to assess or to look at how people walk or behave in their museum. And a lot of their work has to do with what exhibit works, which exhibit works better or less uh, well. So they were very happy to see it. They said a lot of the information uh, confirmed uh, some of their hypotheses or th some of their thoughts, and they also saw uh, some new things that they uh, uh, didn't think about. Um, what they asked more was some of slicing of demographic attributes. Uh, have uh, uh, people to slice information according to age, to gender, to profession, or to uh, uh, large groups as well? <laughs> Uh, in summary, um, we think these diagrams, these tangram diagrams, are a good way to encode racial information. Um, we focus on racial information, um, but we, we think this needs to be explored a bit better. Uh, some uh, maybe empirical examinations about, uh, about these diagrams. Um, we are sure that the user needs should be uh, looked first when you do such, uh, these sorts of analysis. Uh, should first go to curators or first analyze the problem with the people and kind of to do a, a, a design that is together with your targeted audience. And uh, we know there's some uh, weaknesses in diagram, especially the learning curve. It took uh, the curators some time to learn these uh, uh, visualizations, especially uh, the first time you sh you, they saw it. It took them a good 10 to 15 minutes uh, to understand them or uh, to, to get the, the grip of it. Afterwards, th they liked it, but it took them some time to learn it. Um, there was no interaction here, and we think interaction can help, uh, for sure, to do some um, tweaking of, like, uh, to, to examine um, age or, or, or uh, uh, gender and, and stuff like that. 
Uh, and there are some scalability concerns about uh, these diagrams. Um, finally, we're trying now, we're working on uh, making this um, as uh, an interactive uh, visualization, a web visualization tool for uh, museum curators. Um, this is only the beginning of, of the work. We're doing, we did some nice line charts, or uh, bar charts, sorry, uh, about for the information we have, but we haven't incorporated uh, Tangram diagra diagrams yet. We did incorporate, we did try to put uh, our data here, um, uh, but I, 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 I'm not sure how, how uh, this graph is conveyed. We haven't showed it yet to anybody. Um, Steam graph, we tried that as well, but again, we're now uh, working on using, uh, on employing the Tangram diagrams in this uh, system. Um, okay, so that's all. I'll be happy to accept uh, questions. Hi, thank you. You are very nice. Um, following our uh, conference, uh, uh, did you occupy? Uh, did you had a designer in your group? Um, because uh, sorry, I, did, you, did you have a designer in your group? Uh, a designer in our group? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 we didn't. We didn't have any designer in our group. We're more information scientists than yeah. designers. Um, this tool. Uh, uh, it's interesting to see in this conference uh, the difference I see between um, designers who are mostly interested in presentation of information uh, and I think computer scientists or, or uh, information scientists are more interested in, in an analysis of information. Uh, this tool uh, or uh, work is more into the direction of analysis. Um, yeah, that's why I'm asking because I think yeah. this conference really brings uh, out uh, the need to collaborate. I mean, the, it, it would be, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. thinking that, I assume that if uh, you could convey the message more, you know, uh, intuitive to the recruiter, um, it, it would be much more useful for him because it's really hard to, um, to really understand the message, I think, if it's uh, to the diagrams. And, and you said to some that it was hard. Uh, I so think the, ta the Tangram diagrams have a, a steep learning curve. I think mm -hmm. it takes time to understand, so they're not for um, look and uh, understand, or it's not for, for immediate use. But after you understand them, after you spend time, maybe I, I was too quick here, uh, but after you understand them, uh, they're very, I think they're very effective in, in showing what they're meant to show. And we got that uh, answer also from curators who, again, after they understood it, uh, they, they, uh, they, they did uh, get a lot of insights from it. Hi. Um, I think that the analysis you're doing is uh, very similar to the analysis that uh, um, is done uh, on the website, visitors, patterns, um, rooms are like web pages and the flow of visitors is uh, very similar to the flow of uh, visitors to a website between the pages. And <laughs> I think that it would be very interesting to somehow connect the logs from the physical visitors and somehow input them to the already existing uh, um, web analytics software. Mm -hmm. and we have uh, Google Analytics and also open source solutions and uh, see how the solutions that are already implemented and widely used for analyzing web uh, traffic could be applied to uh, to this kind of data, which is not exactly the same because they, they don't have like, a spatial aspect, but a lot of uh, information like uh, analyzing flows and uh, splitting into demography and maybe uh, um, different visitors and different days, etc. Um, I think it could be useful. Okay, thanks. I, I actually never thought about this, uh, uh, about paralyzing or about thinking uh, about web. As in this context, like you said, the difference is a spatial uh, context. Here we show things which are physically spatial in the museum or in the physical world. Um, taking that out, maybe the last diagram, the third diagram, is most relevant uh, in this domain. More questions? More questions? 
So I think an intermediate position between the, the website traffic and the museum is uh, traffic of people who come to visit the shopping mall. Yeah. That, that would be an intermediate yeah. uh, position, and it's an interesting comparison. Yeah, we, we, we thought about that, actually, and we, IBM is working on, on these areas as well. Okay. Um, going back to the learning curve, and again, as a psychologist, it really bothers me that I think in applications like this, the, the learning curve should be as flat as possible. I mean, it should be something that if I receive the Tangram as a curator, I don't want you around to explain to me how to use it. So that's the learning curve. The other piece is that you come for a consulting session, you leave, and the next day I'm not sure that I'll, be, I'll, that I'll remember how to use it. So this was brought up, I think, yesterday in the context of um, uh, I, I slightly how to, how to do, whether we need to remember the visualizations. I slightly disagree because I think in analytic tools, uh, people are, um, uh, they, they do um, allow themselves to spend the effort to learn the tool in order to get their insights. So unlike newspapers where people's attentions are, are seconds or maybe you know, a few seconds, here um, it's, it's expertise. It's people with experts who want to learn about their domain better. So I think they're willing to put the effort into learning the system. And I think after you learn the system, you do know it. You don't need a lot of explanation later on. So I, I, I a bit disagree here. Uh, I would just uh, like to stress uh, what uh, Joel just said, that uh, uh, this conference deals with uh, two separate kinds of visualizations. There are exploratory visualizations versus expository visualizations, and exploratory are more messy and, and they are closer to the data. And, and uh, you use them to see the data, and, and they don't have to be that polished. Versus expository visualizations that, uh, that have a more general audience in mind, and uh, you should label the details and uh, create some finished product. At least this is what I, I feel. So, uh, the same uh, it goes for also for the legwork. Uh, who has to do the legwork? Uh, is it the user or the designer, uh, the programmer, whatever? Yep, thanks, I agree. Okay, so the last question will go to Peter. Um, I'm craving for coffee. I hope everybody else is. Sorry, we'll make it short. Um, I just want to comment on the questions that were asked uh, previously. I, 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 uh, my comment is you need to know your user. So before you know your user, it's easy to say that you need a better design or you need a, a flatter learning curve and so forth. But you, uh, once you know the user, you, you came up with uh, different constraints and different measurement of quality of the visualization. So. Yes, they can be designed nicer, more colorful, and more uh, pretty, and more uh, visually uh, salient uh, and, and appealing, but this is not the, the task that we have here at hand. And um, uh, the purpose here is, uh, is different, and the user is different. So uh, my advice would be to, to get to know your user first, and then uh, the tasks, and then concentrate on the data. So this is the approach that we followed here. So I think that needs to be considered and it might be a, a, a big uh, gap between works that are uh, more uh, data journalism related and works that are more information visualization related. Yep. Uh, again, I, I, I agree. That's a good point. Data journalism, uh, you don't have a specific user in mind. You're, you're pointing into the, all, all your users, all the persons, all the people who's reading the newspaper are your users. Here we have a specific user in mind. Right, the curator, curators are our users. We don't. We're not looking at anybody else. Okay. Thank you, and let's have.